Today I'm in the House of Lords with Lord Lawson, the Conservative Chancellor of the Exchequer from 1983 to 1989, when Margaret Thatcher was Prime Minister. Lord Lawson, thank you for joining us. First of all, we're going to go back a few decades. I think it would be useful to explain why you saw the need to change the tax system in the 80s and what you were hoping to achieve. I wrote my memoirs as soon as I left office and I have a whole section on this issue and that is actually much more useful and much more reliable than anything I may say now. So that I hope that people who are interested in this subject will read that section of my memoirs, which is called The View from Number 11. In my judgment, my basic approach always to the tax system was the tax system should be neutral and it should be fair. And if you wanted to help particular groups of people, then you would do it through the social security system. That is what the social security system exists for. But when it came to uh, married women and families, it was clear that the existing tax system was unfair. It was discriminatory against women in the first case, first instance. It was discriminatory against uh, married women in particular, and in particular, married women who stayed at home to look after the children, rather than just uh, married women who chose to go out to work. So there was a kind of double or treble discrimination. And I was not trying to do anything really other than make the system fair and to remove the unfairness, to remove the discrimination that was in the system. You were trying to make it fairer for, for families. How hard was it to get your ideas through? It, it was it was difficult and unfortunately uh, I was only able to do half the job and I hoped that maybe my successors would finish off the job. The proposal I put to Margaret Thatcher uh, had as an integral part uh, a system of transferable allowances. Uh, it sounds very technical, but what it means is that if under the system a woman, because she's not working, can't take advantage of her, her personal allowance in the first place, uh, then that personal allowance can be transferred so that uh, full value, so that the family as a whole get full value of the allowances. That's rather important. Um, uh, I got her reluctantly to accept the rest of the changes in the tax arrangements for uh, married couples that I was proposing, but she jibbed at that last point, uh, transfer of allowances. And can you explain why Margaret Thatcher wasn't keen on it? I think that she wasn't keen on it because uh, she was a married woman. She had children were grown, grown up by then, but they, they obviously they were young when she said she went out to work. And her sympathy was always with married women who went out to work. Uh, I have to say that I never considered married women who stayed at home to look after the children as not working. Uh, they were working much harder very often than their husbands were when they went out to work. Uh, but anyhow, they were called non-working wives. And, and I think she had a little bit of that uh, psychology. So she didn't want it, but was there support from other people? Geoffrey Howe, my predecessor as Chancellor, who had in fact put me onto this in the first place, he had alerted me to this, and uh, he had tried in the first place and got it with Margaret Thatcher and got absolutely nowhere. At least I managed to uh, get halfway. Why do you think it went wrong over the subsequent years since you were Chancellor? Well, I can't answer for my successes. Uh, I think probably uh, it is that they were focused on other things. Going back to this fully transferable personal allowance that you were proposing, it was dropped. But had it been adopted, do you think that the families that we have that are classed in poverty, who are paying thousands of pounds in tax, would actually not be paying any tax? Yes, I think it would have made that kind of difference. Absolutely. And it was an essential part of the proposal that I had put forward. 
And as I say, I think I, you know, I felt that I had had achieved something that it was, you know, I'd got half the uh, cake, and that the, it was necessary to get the other half later on, rather than just giving up altogether. Do you feel frustrated by the state of the tax system at the moment? Yeah, I think it is unfair. Uh, as I say, I, I don't believe that uh, the, the taxation system should have a particular purpose other than raising, re raising revenue, which has to be raised in order to finance public spending. But that revenue should be raised in a way that is fair rather than unfair. And that was uh, my basic position. Where do you think changes need to be made today? Well, I still believe that the proposal I put forward would be a, a, a desirable and a clearly a great improvement on what we have at the present time. And I think that lower marginal tax rates, wherever they are very high, and you, one of the problems at the present time is you have uh, high marginal tax rates in effect both ends of the income spectrum, uh, the income range, and it is desirable uh, to uh, flatten out those uh, uh, marginal rates. It's interesting that you mentioned the marginal rate of tax because tax and the family have likened marginal tax rates to a kind of modern day serfdom where people are trapped in their financial situation and find it very difficult to escape it. What are your thoughts on that? There are two kinds of high marginal rates. There's high marginal rates where you cannot escape them. And those tend to be, the, these are the marginal rates at the upper end of the range. And the, uh, the only way, as a way you can escape them, is you decide to retire, stop working altogether. The, at the lower end, you have these marginal rates, but they are temporary. If you can increase your income beyond a certain point, then the marginal rate comes down again. So there is an escape from that trap. Uh, uh, but the, the trap shouldn't be there in the first place. Uh, but there is at least an escape from that trap. And, and to some extent, it is inevitable. There is a basic principle which is not widely understood. And that is that if you, to have uh, benefits for everybody universally um, is unaffordable. So benefits have to be selective when people are in particular difficulties. Uh, when they cease to be in those difficulties, you have to withdraw those benefits. Not completely, uh, at one point suddenly you will have a cliff edge, as they say in our days, but you have to gradually to withdraw them. And that causes an implied, the withdrawal of the benefits uh, causes an implied high marginal rate. But unless you have no selective benefits at all, uh, you can't escape that problem. It's a fact of life, a fact of arithmetic. Germany has independent taxation, but it also gives couples the option of being taxed jointly. So it means that if they are earning up to 50,000 euros, they could be paying little if any tax. Do you think we need to be adopting a system like that in the UK? Well, I think certainly, I mean, uh, Germany has a very successful economy and, and uh, they can uh, afford that. But I think that that was, in a sense, uh, implicit in my original proposals, that sort of thing. Do you think it's important to reform the tax system rather than trying to make the system fairer by changing tax credits? Well, I think you have to use both the uh, social security system to deal with problems uh, of um, uh, poverty and that kind of thing. 
and you have, want to have a tax system, as I say, which is neutral and doesn't discriminate against particular circumstances, uh, which make it completely unfair. What is it about tax and the family that you have supported over these years? I think that uh, pointing to the unfairness that there is in it at the present time, so far as uh, young families are concerned, uh, and the need to do something about it, I thoroughly support. Uh, the question then is, okay, how do you finance that public spending? And as I say, I think you need to finance it in a way that is fair. Uh, and there can be different views. Different people will have different views about what is fair. But I think it was quite clear that the tax system which we had traditionally was not fair. It seemed to me that the position that we had traditionally with the taxation uh, of women and therefore of mothers and, uh, and indirectly families was clearly unfair. And I think it would have been made much fairer if, and I repeat this, but it's an important point, if the transferable allowances part of my proposal had been implemented. The not implementing that did make a difference, but I hoped that it would come at a later date. A Chancellor's job is probably the heaviest in government, and uh, he has to focus on a great many issues, not just on this one, important though it is. It may well be the reason why it has remained an issue for so long. I'm afraid uh, it is difficult as much as one would like to simplify, uh, it is a complex problem. Therefore, any solution is also going to be very complex.